The entire length of San Pablo Avenue from border to border has been declared a PDA primary development area. Along this quarter, the city has identified 32 sites for development. On those properties, there are three vacant lots, three parking lots, and 30 businesses. It seems unlikely that all the properties would be given over for development, but if they were, here's what would be lost as shown on the screen. Number 14, a swag check center. Number 15, parking for Myers Sound. Number 16, Round Tree Nightclub. Number 19, Bank of America. Number 20, Babbitt's Brake Service. Number 21, a la car automotive and solar car wash. Number 22 and 23, Omega Salvage. Number 24, used car lot. Number 25, East Bay Nursery. Number 26, Jack in the Box. Number 27, AC Delco Car Care. Number 28, U-Haul. Number 29, Indian Fashion, Coin Operated Laundry, and Middle East Market. Number 30, 99 cent store. Number 32, Perfect Auto Service and Karate. Number 33, Golden Bear Inn and Kishi Sushi. Number 34, a Honda. Number 35, the Chevron Gas Station. Number 36, Yin's Auto. Number 38, on Gilman Street, Happy Donuts. Number 39, on Gilman Street, Gilman Building Bingo. Number 40, Church's Kitchen. Number 42, McDonald's. Number 43 is Gilman Auto. And finally, number 45 is General Transmissions. From its early beginnings as a path along San Francisco Bay to being the main street of Berkeley in the early 1900s, and today being a state highway with many small businesses, it remains an important part of our city. The entrance gate was removed in 1931. As you can see, the street was very bleak. Sometime in the 1970-1980s, the street was beautified by adding the center divider and the street trees. Today, San Pablo Avenue is a nicely shaded avenue and pleasant to be on. As we tour the avenue, we begin to get the picture of a small town business boulevard with lots of activity. We also see that there are many opportunities for improvement. The avenue should be developed further with care. As ABAG and the City of Berkeley plan for the development of San Pablo Avenue, the communities that border the avenues needs to be notified and invited into the process. In particular, the small businesses and the residents whose properties are next to the new development need to be brought into the planning process. This means from the very beginning of the process, not after the drawings have been completed and sent to the governing authority for approval. By doing this, the projects have a good chance of being approved without the usual opposition and the accompanying delays we see now. So let's look at the projects that are in place now on San Pablo Avenue. They are 1155 San Pablo Avenue, 20, 1229 San Pablo Avenue, 1406 pa San Pablo Avenue, 1800 San Pablo Avenue, 2577 San Pablo Avenue, and 2700 San Pablo Avenue. Almost all of them created problems for the city during the approval process and for the neighbors next to them. At 1800 San Pablo Avenue, the application was filed on October 29, 2002, and the project was finally completed sometime in 2013. The house behind is now for sale. All of these projects, with the exception of 1155 San Pablo Avenue, are built right up to the sidewalk and the rear property line, leaving a wall facing their neighbors. At 1200 Ashby slash 3015 San Pablo Avenue, the project is named the entry point to the bungling Ashby Arts District to the east it is now nearing completion. We ask what bungling art district? This project has all the features that concerns many about what is wrong with the planning of these projects. Setbacks are non-existent. 
Green space is nowhere to be found. The neighbor's concerns were not taken into account. Shading, sunlight, traffic, and air for the neighbors was ignored. The corner at San Pablo and Ashby is one of the most congested intersections in Berkeley, yet an exit from the building is on to Ashby Avenue. Of the 32 possible projects along San Pablo Avenue, four are in the development stage but not yet completed. 2720 San Pablo Avenue has 18 units. 2747 San, San Pablo has 39 units. 2748 San Pablo Avenue with 23 units and 1500 San Pablo Avenue with 170 units. So what should be done to make the development along San Pablo Avenue more neighborhood friendly and avoid the development delays caused by neighborhood opposition? In searching for solutions, others cities were examined to see how they approached the problems. The one that made the most sense was Mountain View, California. As you can see from the illustration, the setback requirement between a residential property and the development respects the concerns about sunlight, air, and open space. It provides open space on the ground for the residents who will live in the new development, as well as providing a sense of caring for everyone. Development and change will co continue to be part of our life in Berkeley. How we do it is a question for all of us. Someone must make compromises if we want to live together in a very dense city. The neighborhoods must give up some of these things they want, open space, views, and uncrowded streets. The developers must lower their profit expectations, the attitude that they can ignore the neighborhoods and not make contributions to the city for infrastructure to support their crowding they are causing making the city neighborhoods unlivable. The planning process in Berkeley leaves plenty of room for citizen input. The question is, can that input be used to make the outcome more acceptable to everyone?